Welcome to Weld.com. I need to do some tool repair today. I've uh, I noticed a couple things that we had fabricated in the past that sharp edges and broke and I'm just kind of do a little maintenance here. So first thing I need to do is, uh, I'm gonna, I guess what's leading into this whole deal is, personally, I'm kind of tired of the throwaway market and buying junk, you know, like a simple dust pan for crying out loud. They're real thin, flimsy, they get bent up. So we started fabricating our own and we took some uh, 14 gauge material and plasma cut, good project for the students. You can MIG or TIG, uh, quarter inch handle. Everybody recognizes this, the handle off chip and hammer. I buy these things by the truckload and use them on different stuff, smokers and everything else. But it broke back here and it's kind of loose. Plus I've noticed a sharp edge up here. I just want to take care of that. I could take care of it with a die grinder. I think I'm just gonna put a little spot of weld around it and come off of it. And we'll lead into some other stuff that's around me here that I wanna replace, repair, save, something. I got one piece behind me over here. It's been in my family for 60 something years that I know of. I know I started using it as a little kid. The handle broke, the top of the handle broke. <clears throat> and I'll get to that in a minute. I'll explain what happened and what it's gonna to cost to replace it and why I did what I did. So. Uh, let me get my hood on, I'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm gonna do these repairs today on an Everlast 250EX ACDC stick and TIG and uh, ER70S6, a couple different sizes. I might get into a thin weld back here on the back side. I might drop down to a 1 16th wire. I'm not gonna change amperage. I think I've got 150 amps on here. Pure argon, 20 cubic feet per hour. Uh, Westchester Iron Cat Goatskin Gloves. These are really comfortable, I like these. So the first thing I wanna do is take care of this sharp edge here. I think we blasted these together with all MIG, which was fine, other than this back handle separated a little bit. And that's kinda of common with these spring handles. took care of the first part of it. I was reaching way back up inside here. I thought I was gonna use some filler wire, but I didn't. But I also noticed that I uh, kind of separated the wire back here, so now I'm gonna fuse them together. That completes that repair. It's kind of a, just want, I didn't want any sharp edges on here anymore, so I blended around where the end of that was and took care of this, kind of separated. So that, I'm done with that. And stuff breaks every now and then. We'll fix it as best we can. Um, the next thing I want to get into is <clears throat> my daddy's old spade. <clears throat> this thing has been in my family for 60 something. I'm 58 years old and I remember using this when I was a little kid and it has I, I mean, it's just been around forever 
uh, riveted wood handle into the riveted uh, throat right here. I don't know, I mean, this is replaceable here. When this thing broke, it was rotten up here at the very top. So I came back in and fashioned one out of stainless flat bar, thin wall tubing, and I kind of took it home and I was testing it out. I think it's gonna be okay. I just need to put some more spot welds on here and sand and finish. Again, I don't like a bunch of sharp edges when you get to working hard and you, you don't want any sharp edges digging in your gloves and stuff. So, you know, I, I went and looked at a replacement handle for this particular spade. I think it was like 45 to 60 bucks or something. And I, I'm going, wow, you gotta be kidding me, really? It, it's just, it seems like anything these days is like a throwaway market and I'm, I'm tired of it. So I try to repair and save and rebuild stuff. And this is something I came up with. So I'm gonna come in here and probably uh, wrap these corners a little bit. <clears throat> so the weld metal takes care of the sharp edge. I'll probably put another spot in here. Yeah, I'm gonna get hot enough to probably go into the wood, but my cooling tank's right over here, so I'll be okay. I'm not gonna catch anything on fire. And then the rest of it would be hand sanding and, and uh, flapper wheel work and stuff like that. So I'm gonna catch these corners and probably wrap them, come up here about a quarter of an inch. Just 304 stainless steel, so I've got 308 filler wire. As I'm coming up over the top of this, I'm going ahead and taking the arc and washing it out here. I still could take care of that flat edge. I'm just using the arc right now to kind of blend all this together so when I go back and hit it with the flapper wheel, all these edges will be nice and round and they'll sand in nice. I still have some sharp edges on this bar stock down below and I'll take care of those as well. I just want to make this look a little finished. Structurally, this is fine. I don't need to reach inside here and put weld on the inside. It's, you know, it's got enough weld on it to hold anything that I'm going to put on it. Somebody's probably going to ask, how come you didn't do this out of aluminum? And that was my first thought, was to do it out of aluminum. But I couldn't find any tubing of the right diameter to go over this wooden handle. And I did find some stainless tubing. So, you know, aluminum would have been strong enough as well. Okay, I'm done. I mean, it's... Uh, a functional unit now. The rest of it, I'll just come in and use the flapper wheel and dress and sand, and go back to work, you know? I've dug a lot of trenches with this whole thing and it's just handy to have around. I, I can't, you know, you, you use stuff. I mean, we've edge sidewalks. Uh, my dad and I worked in the oil field a lot. He was a petroleum engineer and geologist. And we did a lot of oil field work and just stuff like this just comes in handy when you're trenching and laying pipe, digging out a valve, doing something. The old good old flat spade. And it's an old one. So I'll be right back. We've got one other thing we want to talk about. Hey, a while back I was checking Instagram. I'm amazed at the quality of work some people put out on Instagram. I mean, there's some cool stuff going on. There's some knowledgeable, experienced very talented individuals on there. I could name names, but we've got to limit the time on this video. So, um, but I, I was cruising through something and somebody put a 
Somebody put a post out on Instagram that said their favorite hickory handle broke. <clears throat> and I feel for them because this old hickory handle, I've soaked this, I wish I had a dollar for every time I've soaked this thing in the cooling tank over the weekend when I left. It still has a wedge down in there. And I know my other handle, here's my hatchet right here. I've carried this rascal with me when I was in Boy Scouts long, 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 long time ago. And it needs a new handle. Things dry out. God, that's handy. I've done a lot of kindling and done a lot of work on my property with it. Still holds a great edge. But somebody put this thing out on Instagram that their handle broke and they were heartbroken over the, the hammer and all that. And so I'd walk, I was walking by my anvil over here and I took a picture. I took a picture of this thing here. This handle came out of this hammer. I've been at the college for 20 years. So two years ago, this thing finally gave it up and I was tired of, I think this, yeah, this is the original handle. Anyway, I came in one day and I braided this out of some quarter inch round stock and brazed it in there. I, I'd, a buddy of mine that I worked with years ago had one like it and I thought I'd experiment. Uh, kind of missed the weave down here when I started, but it got real tight up here. But I like that, you know, that's a mistake that worked out okay because it's heavier down here than it is up here at the front. And, you know, this thing will not slip out of your hands. It's real easy to use. Somebody had commented about reverberation. Oh man, a little bit, not bad, you know. I mean, we, we stamp our plates and some of our piping material, we'll stamp it as we cut training coupons so that we can do a, a, a track of the material. And so we're hammering stamps in there and I don't really notice it that much. Some, yeah. And I poured the brass to it. You know, what's the hammer handle made of? It's a cast iron, cast steel. I did a spark test. Here's one, here's one that I dug out of my toolbox. It's a cute little hammer and I used to have this little short uh, wooden handle, let me say it was about this long total, about that long total, and I had taken uh, a thin bladed grinder and I cut ridges in it for my hand so it wouldn't slip out. So I wanna make another one of these for this little guy here, my little mallet. I will go in and clean this up. I'll probably bead blast it. I already did a spark test on it. I know it's Castile. So I could TIG weld, I could wire feed weld it, I could stick weld it. It's, it's not that big a deal. I don't need any high alloy nickel or anything like that. I could braze it again. I don't know, I'll decide when I get there to see how we finish this out, but I wanna do another one of these guys here. So quarter inch round stock, we'll get the torch out. We'll uh, lay them up in the vise. Probably start that weave a little tighter and um, when we get done, I may do a little V-hook or something. If I can, I'll probably do a little V-hook so we could hang the hammer up too. So um, in any event, the whole video is about saving tools, repairing tools, fabricating tools. We started out with a dustpan. Those things are pretty tough. They don't bend up. You know, when we blow everything out and start sweeping and, and we've got this dustpan that holds a pretty good volume they're gonna last a long time, a long time. We've made probably a half a dozen of them here in the shop. We've made about a half a dozen for the machine shop and the automotive shop as well. So projects, sheet metal, square tubing, TIG works great. Uh, a lot of times you can just tack it up. It's structurally fine. Our whole broom handle or broom hanger thing that we made. It's a, a piece of plate, square tubing, got hooks all over it, and we stack all our brooms on it. We didn't weld anything out solid. You can tack it together with TIG and it's fine. So I hope that helped. Uh, keep an open mind when it comes to repairing and fabricating things because you can save a lot of money, a lot of money. Plus whatever you build and or repair, may last way, way longer than something you could just go buy off the shelf. So I hope this helps. Appreciate your comments. Make sure you subscribe to the videos. New videos come out each week. Thank you for watching.
I wanted you to get that. I did. Get some more. I am. <laughs>